Well, good morning here on this early Sunday morning. Uh, it's Minister Tim here, and uh, it's bright and early. Coming to you today early because I have other minister duties to do later on today on this fine Sunday morning. So I wanted to come to you early this morning to share a message from God's Word as we've been looking at over the last few weeks. And uh, reminded today that we serve a mighty God, a big God, a powerful God, not a God of weakness, a God of power. And I remind that today as I looked at uh, the Word of God, let me show you this this morning, uh, the, the greatness, the gravity, the magnificence of our God. So let me take a look here. As we look at this Bible here, the Word of God, and this particular Bible weighs about 30 pounds. Uh, and it's just an example of how big our God is, how powerful God's Word is uh, to us. And whether you have a Bible like this or something, of course, very different and small, no matter if it's the Word of God, it's truth, and uh, it's powerful indeed. So we've been looking at um, this series on fighting the good fight of faith. And uh, two questions we've been asking ourselves, of course, is... Uh, one, what are we fighting against? We found this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Paul writes, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And, of course, that brings us to question number two. Well, why are we needing to fight this good fight of faith? And uh, Peter writes this in his first letter, uh, chapter 5, verse 8 through 9. He says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And so we've been seeing that this battle is a spiritual one that we fight, uh, so we need spiritual weapons to fight this good fight of the faith, of course. And in order to access these weapons, we need access to the one who provides them. And that, of course, is Jesus Christ. And, of course, to say, the scriptures say that those in faith in Jesus are soldiers. Soldiers of Jesus Christ. And as soldiers, like any soldier, we will face opposition. And if we find this, Paul writes in the second letter to Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3, he says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. See, we are fighting a fight, but thank God we do not fight this fight alone. No, there is victory in Jesus Christ. He has overcome the world and all his challenges. See, the war has already been won. In Jesus, we overcome, and yet our battles still remain. And as Christian soldiers, we need the right weapons and the proper clothing to fight this good fight of faith. And Paul reminds us first, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. See, the battle is fought in the power of God's might. See, and, and the spiritual fight is a attack against us but because we belong to Jesus. See, all... All people will fight battles that are spiritual in nature, but only those in Christ Jesus fight the good fight of faith. And, of course, it's the ultimate battle of right versus wrong, of good versus evil. And only those, of course, in Jesus Christ have access to the weapons and the clothing necessary to fight this good fight of faith. The weapons and the clothing for battle? The armor of God. And Paul writes about this, and we've been looking at the last few weeks, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. He writes, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles, or the schemes he's talking about, of the devil. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shy with the preparation of of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, whereof ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, 
and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all supplication, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching therefore unto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. See, as soldiers of Christ, we need to be dressed ready for battle. Every day, no exceptions. The battle is coming every day, my brethren. We must be ready. And so what is this armor of God? We've been looking at this last few weeks. We've been talking about this. The armor of God we've defined this way is Christ and us in Christ. The armor of God, Christ and us in Christ Jesus. See, the armor of God is our protection as well as our weapons of war. And this type of, of course, spiritual warfare cannot be fought with muskets, cannot be fought with, with cannon, with sabers, cannot be fought on horseback. This is a different time of battle, and uh, it's a spiritual battle that we're fighting. And the armor of God is something that we have to close ourselves in spiritually each day. Well, how do I put on this armor? Well, we begin with prayer. Spend some time in fellowship with the Lord our God. And Paul talks about this here in Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 18 when he says, Praying always with all, supp with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching wherefore unto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. See, praying for God's protection on us in each piece of the armor. And the next... Remind yourself who Christ is in each piece of the armor. Then, remind yourself who you are in Christ. And we've looked at now, of course, the helmet of salvation. We looked at that, a guard in our mind, reminding ourselves that we are saved by faith in Christ Jesus, us in Christ. Claim it, my brethren. Believe it. Set your mind on it. And the scripture tells us to set our mind on things above where Christ is seated. And Paul says this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. He says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Be the helmet of salvation, spiritual guard in our minds to protect us, you and me from the lies of Satan. Set your mind not on earthly things, not on the earthly challenges or struggles. Rather, set your mind on things that are holy, righteous, and pure things. The helmet of salvation. Next, breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness, a guard in our hearts. We looked at this, of course. Christ, uh, we saw in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 through 2, speaks about that. It says, Jesus, the righteousness of God. He has paid the price for a sin debt. That's what the scripture reminds us there. And uh, Paul writes 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He says, For he, speaking of God, has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. See, Jesus is the righteous one. We are made righteous in God through Jesus. Amen to that. Righteous me righteousness meaning right with God. See, without Jesus, we cannot be right with God because of our sin. And we saw this in Psalm chapter 5, verse 4, where sin cannot dwell where God is. And we saw this in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13. He says, uh, he found that we find that God cannot tolerate sin. And that's why sin must be dealt with in order for us to be right with God. And that comes through Jesus, the breastplate of righteousness, a guard on our hearts. And being right with God means that the Penalty of sin has been dealt with by Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. And in Jesus, our old life of bondage to sin died. And our new life in him, as he rose from the dead, frees us from sin's grip. See, sin long no, no longer has dominion over you when you made right with God through Jesus. Again, believe it. We must claim it. Hold on to it. Trust it. We need to put on the spiritual breastplate of righteousness. Remind ourselves in Christ Jesus, we are made right with God. But if our heart is not completely set on God, we can be deceived. And to avoid falling for Satan's lies, we need God's truth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, Paul writes 
lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We are not ignorant of his devices. That's why we need God's word to spring, to spring forth truth into us. And Satan will attempt to deceive us and even twist God's word and, and try to make you believe something that's not true. That's why Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, he says, this was, um, uh, Jesus was speaking, and said, this is actually John's, I'm sorry, John's gospel, chapter 17, verse 17 through 21, where Jesus was praying to God, he says, sanctify them through thy truth, to God, thy word is truth, he says, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through thy word. That they all may be one as thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The truth, God's word. Amen. We need the truth. And of course, we now find the piece of armor with that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, Paul says, there, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. He's speaking about a belt of truth to hold us up by God's truth. And we find this, Jesus in this, and where is Jesus in this? We find John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 6. Uh, Jesus said to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father but my me. And then, of course, us in this, we say, we find uh, John's second letter, chapter 1, verse 2, he says, For truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Amen to that. See, God, Jesus, oh, Jesus is God in the flesh, the embodiment of truth. The truth dwelleth in those by faith in Jesus. Therefore, the word of God is truth. Psalmist writes in Psalm 119, verse 11, he says, Thy word I have hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. See, when I come to Jesus Christ in faith, my King, my Lord, my Savior, the promised Messiah who came to redeem mankind, then the Holy Spirit poured out on us through Jesus Christ. And the psalmist writes this in Psalm 139, verse 7 through 10, he says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend unto the heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. See, the Lord never leaves us alone. He will be there in your time of need. See, Satan, of course, tries to deceive us, as we've seen with his lies, and we need tr God's truth to hold us up, a spiritual belt of truth. Jesus is truth. His word is truth. Know him and know his word. And keep his word in your heart that you will not fall for Satan's lies and you will not sin against God. Well, so far we've looked at, over the last few weeks, the helmet of salvation, a guard on our minds, the breastplate of righteousness, a guard in our hearts. Belt of truth, which is to hold us up, a guard against deception. Spiritual protection against the lies and deceit of the enemy. Clothed in the armor of God. But the armor is not just for defending ourselves spiritually. It's also for advancing the kingdom of God. We're going to see that today as Ephesians, Paul writes, chapter 6, verse 15, about the armor of God. He says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace, advancing the kingdom of God. Christ in that, we find this Isaiah writes here, prophesied about Jesus, chapter 9, verse 6. He says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government should be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Speaking about Jesus, Isaiah was prophesying. And, of course, us, uh, or another, again, another verse about Christ uh, in this Gospel of Peace. Um, Mark writes this, chapter 1, verse 1, he says, The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God. This gospel is Jesus Christ. Jesus in, of course, the gospel of peace. And us in Christ, Paul writes, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, he says, More over, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. You've received it, okay, it's Christ in us, the gospel, and where you stand. See, Christian soldiers, as we've seen, will face opposition, and we certainly face opposition to the gospel. And of course, what is Satan trying to do? In this, in this gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, Paul writes 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. He says, In whom the God of this world, he's talking about Satan, he's talking about small g, he's not really a God, but he's saying the God of this world uh, has blinded the minds of them which believe us not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See, Satan is going to try and blind you and, 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 and put distractions in the way of the gospel, he's going to try and stop the advancement of the gospel. Expect it by Christian soldiers. We need to be ready for it. The gospel, what is it? Well, we've, we've looked at this uh, in more detail uh, previously, but let's look to the scriptures here quickly what it says about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's go back to Luke's gospel, chapter 24, verse 44, and Jesus speaking to his disciples, he said, and, and he, it says, and he, of course, speaking to Jesus, said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was with yeah, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. See, Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies, the scriptures foretold about him, thereby proving he is the promised Messiah. See, that's good news. Jesus fulfilled all those scriptures, as he said here. All that was written about me, in the, the prophets, the law of Moses, and the Psalms, all was written about me to declare Jesus the Messiah. He filled it all. He's the Holy One of God, the one who reigns supreme over all. And Paul writes this 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25 through 26. He says, um, For he, speaking of Jesus, must reign, he must reign, till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The last enemy. Well, when did Jesus' reign begin? Well, we find when he came to earth and brought his kingdom to earth, his, his reign began. We invaded Satan's domain. We see Mark wrote about this, chapter 1, uh, verses 14 through 15. He says, Now after John was put in prison, he's speaking of John the Baptist, who, who came to proclaim the coming Messiah. Um, it says, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom and saying the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, believe the gospel. See the gospel. Jesus is king, and his kingdom is here and now. See, someday Jesus will return to reign on his earthly kingdom. That will take place, but for now, a spiritual kingdom has invaded this world, Jesus' kingdom, placed inside believers in Jesus. See, is, is Jesus really a king? Well, Jesus says this, we, we find in Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 20 through 21, when he, uh, 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 when he was confronted by the Pharisees, okay? Jesus first says about this, he says, When he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you, Jesus said. Well, again, is Jesus really the king? Okay, is that what he said about himself? He declares his kingdom? Well, we find in John's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 37, he's, Jesus is arrested. He's brought before Pilate, the, 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 the Roman governor. And, and, he's, and Pilate says, therefore unto him, Out thou a king, then. There's the ultimate question. Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I'm a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into this world, 
that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. See, Jesus Christ the King. To his apostles, it's written here in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse Luke 24, 44 through 47, then he, then opened he, Jesus speaking, their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, thus is written, thus shall be behooved Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance, remission for sins, should be preached in the name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And the Apostle Paul speaks likewise, speaking of Jesus. He writes this, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 through 4. He says this, he says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, that, thou, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, right? According to the Scriptures. Jesus the King, God's holy and anointed one the promised Messiah, the scriptures foretold, and in him were fulfilled. Came to earth as a king to bring forth his kingdom, a spiritual kingdom now, the Holy Spirit given to those with faith in Jesus. Jesus the king forgives us of our sin, the penalty of our sin removed by Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross and shed blood, raised on the third day alive again. In Jesus we are reborn then to a new life of righteousness. God's power through his Holy Spirit guides us to live the life that God desires for us. The bonds of sin broken. In Jesus Christ, we're set free. In Jesus Christ, there is victory over sin's power. And Paul writes this in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. He says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. This is all the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the gospel. And so, Jesus writes, or Jesus spoke this, written, of course, by Matthew in his gospel, chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. We've got this good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, we are given these shoes, shod, to go out and speak the good news. And Jesus says, recorded in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, chapter 28, verse 19 through 20, says, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded unto you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Your feet shod with the preparation, the Gospel of peace, the Gospel of peace, advancing the kingdom of God. See, with our feet shot with the gospel of peace, we walk, we go forward, speaking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Advancing the kingdom of God. And of course, Paul writes this very uh, relevant verse for us today. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, he says, In the peace of God, Jesus, of course, is the Prince of Peace. He says, The peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. As we finish up, my brethren, let us remember the words of Jesus we just read here in Matthew's Gospel, so we can take encouragement today when we're advancing the Gospel and, and Satan wants to detract you, wants to discourage you, wants to frustrate you, wants you to stop you. As you go forward, remember the, remember the words of Jesus. He says, and lo, Jesus says, of course, Jesus is with you always, always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Amen.